And question number 91, what was Christ's mission on earth? His mission on earth, what he came to earth for. He, sent by his Father, is to save us from sin and hell, to bring us with him to heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, his Father's house, as he calls it. He did it by his suffering and death. As St. John says, he came to gather the scattered children of God. He came to build up the new family of God, the church, the new kingdom of God, the new people of God, the new house of God. That's what he came to build up, to gather us from all the nations, or as he said sometimes, the new Israel. That means the people, chosen people of the Old Testament were the people of Israel. In the blood of Christ, everyone is called. There is no limit. There are no frontiers peoples, cultures, languages, races, status of life, all are called. Neither Jew nor Gentile, neither Greek nor Hebrew, neither man nor woman, all are one in Christ. All are called. I think that's so important because so many people feel that while it's Christianity is just for an exclusive uh, group, it's, it's not everyone that is called to Christianity. We can find our salvation in anything that is really good. No, Christianity is not a club for a few. It is the family made by God for all. As the Vatican Council says, everyone is called to the Catholic unity of this one people of God. That's in paragraph 13 of the document on the church. And whether you actually belong to the church, like those who have their names in the baptism register, or you are related to the church somehow, or, or other Christians, then other believers, and indeed, says Vatican to any person of goodwill. Mm -hmm. The person is related somehow to the church. We don't need to know all. Yes. God does not need our permission in order to give his grace. As this Holy Father says often, God can give his grace outside the visible boundaries of the church. There are many people of goodwill. Only God knows how each individual has responded to the light which that person has. Only God can judge that much. We can't. So this means that there is salvation outside of the formal church itself. Yes. Salvation is in Christ. He is the only Savior. But some people, through no fault of their own, don't actually belong to the church they can be saved if they do all that their conscience tells them, if it is not their fault that they are not in the church, if they are ready to do whatever they know God wants them to do, then, says Vatican II, with, they will get God's grace. So it's baptism by desire, basically. We can put it that way, mm -hmm. but they will get God's grace. Or as the Vatican Council says again in the document on church in the world of today, that Christ, by taking on human nature, has somehow united himself with every human being. So we must believe that God, in some way known to him alone, can put everyone in communication with the mystery of Christ, mm -hmm. salvation. We don't have to understand all the ways of God. Mm -hmm. In my work as president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, I have met followers of other religions who, as far as I could see, are really very good people, very sincere. I think God accepts them. Not because one religion is as good as another, but because that individual has done all that that individual can do. Yes. That wow. individual is sincere in front of God. But a Catholic that has been given the grace of being born and raised as a Catholic doesn't have the same freedoms to leave the church. Oh, no. Hey, the Vatican II says in paragraph 14 of the document on the church, mm -hmm. speaking to Catholics, it says, you know that we reach God, we reach Christ through baptism and faith. And they open to us the church. They open as through a door. We enter the church by faith and baptism. Whoever, therefore, knowing this, will refuse to believe and to be, enter the Catholic Church or to remain in it, will not be saved. And Catholics must know that it is not enough to belong actually to the church unless they persevere in charity 
not only will they not be saved, but they will be more severely judged, says Vatican II. That means more severely condemned. So it's no use for a Catholic to say, I have my name in the baptism register, I'm an actual member of the church, and therefore I will go to heaven. I know. If that person does not follow what Christ teaches us through the church, not only will the person not reach heaven, but he will go deeper down in hell because that person had greater opportunities and threw them away. God will judge each person according to the opportunities that person had, according to the response that person made. So one day, we were sitting in Bombay two years ago in the Archbishop's house. There were several Hindus and Sikhs and a few Muslims and then Christians. And one of them said, well, you are a man of God. You are the nearest to God. We, we are the rest. We don't. I said, I don't know who is nearest to God, all of us in this room now. They looked at me surprised. I said, I don't know. It may be you. It may be you. It may be you. Only God knows who of us has responded best to his offers. Oh, that's powerful. I saw them all reflecting in perfect silence. Mm. We all go before God on our knees. If we were to be quoting we are in the Catholic Church, then it means that uh, people like us cardinals have already our reserved seats and we don't mm -hmm. have to worry. Right. Not so. Not so. Everyone will be judged according to the person's opportunities and response. Generosity, fidelity, constancy, faith. So when much is given, much will be expected. Exactly. Exactly.